Blender's screw modifier is a great way to make things like springs and threads for things like jars, jar lids, or parts of vehicles, anything you can think of that requires uh, just a simple spiral. The way it works is by taking a simple mesh and rotating it around its own center on one of its local axes. So for instance, this mesh is only this circle and it is facing the camera or is facing the Y axis. Our screw modifier is set to operate on the Z axis, and that is the Z axis of the object, not the world. So that is the local coordinates. The screw modifier is fairly simple. There is an angle, the screw amount, and the iterations. So if I were to turn this off, you see that our mesh is simply this circle with its origin point here at the center. The angle dictates how many degrees around the screw modifier will operate. So if we were to turn this all the way down to one iteration, you can see that 360 degrees goes in a complete circle. If I were to change the angle to say 180, it's a half a circle before it continues with its modifier. The number after screw dictates how high or how far the screw modifier will move along the axis defined below. So if I were to change this back to 360, each uh, profile will be exactly 1.49 meters to the next one. Iterations dictates how many coils you'll get in your spring or threads in your threaded model. The axis, as mentioned before, tells the modifier which direction to make a screw shape or a spiral shape. So depending on the axis and what way your mesh is facing, you can make some very interesting shapes. If we wanted to make threading on something like a bolt, we would want to make sure that this distance is no further than the height of the actual mesh. So if we were to turn this off, you can see that this is the mesh and its height, if we were to turn off my subdivision surface, its height is 0.2. That's so the screw modifier is set to 0.2. That way each iteration will stack directly on top of the next. In this case you would want to have merge turned on. However, merge does not seem to operate properly at this current time. I'm using Blender 3.0. Uh, you may find that it works for you in a different situation. I have not figured out how to make it happen. If you want each stack to merge with the next one, you would have to apply the modifier and then merge by distance for all vertices. Steps is the number of steps in the circle around each spiral. So if I were to turn on our wireframe and turn down steps to say six, you can see that there are six steps around the circle. The render and the viewport can be different. If I were to hit render right now, there would be 16 steps around the circle. This is to allow you to have high poly models uh, that are not bogging down your viewport. So you can have your viewport set relatively low and then at render time it'll add it all in and you'll have your your high resolution model. Under normals you can choose smooth or flat shading. You can also flip them. You can flip your normals for inside and outside depending on how your mesh is facing when it, when it spirals. So for instance, uh, let's turn on our face orientation. And right now you can see that the outside is really the inside. Blue is outside, red is backside. So if we were to flip this, uh, we would have it facing the right way. And that really depends on um, the geometry you were using in the first place. So if we were to go back to our spring, the geometry in the beginning was already facing the right way. So flip doesn't really do anything for it. Calculate order uh, is not a setting that I have uh, been able to find an exact description of its use nor have I been able to see a change in my models when using it. 
You can also stretch your UVs on your X and Y axis. U and V are X and Y on, in a 2D plane. Uh, that is in the, in the case of something being UV unwrapped and you apply a screw modifier to it and then everything looks bad because it's stretched in a certain direction, you can change it with these. There's one more way to use the screw modifier where the origin point of the mesh does not matter so much. If we go and take a look at this model, and let's turn off some of these overlays, you can see that the origin point of this, mo this mesh is right here, yet it's the screw is going around the center of, of, the, uh, of the world. And that is because we have an axis object selected. So you can see that right here, axis object, and it says empty. That is the name of this object. It's an empty. Uh, if we were to uh, rename this, it makes better sense here uh, what we're looking at. So this is the name of the object around which this screw modifier is operating rather than the original point of the mesh. So if we were to move this around, you can see that the point around which it spirals is always that empty. And it's always the Z axis of that empty because we have Z selected. And that's really all you need to know in order to use the screw modifier. It's not complicated. However, uh, it can be confusing if you've never used it before. And the thing to keep in mind always is that if you are not using another object, such as an empty, you will have to have the origin point of the mesh be at the center where you want the screw modifier to rotate around. So hopefully this has helped you and you have now mastered the screw modifier. This has been Carl with Blender Forge. Happy blending!